Hey y'all, today we're gonna walk through five quick tips for success in trial. Now, this is a bonus tip because as a Bowen student, you have access to something called Lexis Courtroom Cast. The link is in the handout that I'm gonna give you, or you can go to courtroomcast, all one word, dot lexisnexus.com. Now, Courtroom Cast is an amazing tool that delivers audio and video content that helps you in your classes and also helps you in practice, and you have access to all of it for free. The things that I want to point out today are the training libraries. So there's three separate video clip libraries, which are organized by course. You have trial advocacy, rules of evidence, and appellate advocacy. And each one has collections of video clips from legal proceedings based on the stage of trial. So when you go to courtroomcast.lexisnexus.com, you just wanna to go to sign in or register, and then you'll select your law school from the list. So if we scroll down to University of Arkansas Bowen School of Law, select your school, enter your UALR.edu email address, put in your full name, and then create a password and select your role. Then agree to the terms of service and click sign up. Let me know if you have any questions. Once you are signed in, you'll go to training, and this is where you can access those three training libraries. So we've got trial advocacy, rules of evidence, and appellate advocacy. So you can enter the library and select the stage of trial that you're looking for to watch or see the techniques. So you can go through and you can see all of those different stages over here. And that's gonna be really helpful in preparing for your own trials as part of mock trial or lawyering skills. Now, let's move on to Lexis so that I can show you our five tips. So tip number one is to utilize Lexis answers, especially in a pinch. You can ask any question into the search box and Lexis answers is going to provide answer cards that give you a starting place for that question. So we could type in, for example, and you'll see those answer cards appear at the top of your search results. So Lexis will still run a search for those keywords or terms that it recognizes from the question, and those cases or documents will appear beneath the answer cards. But the answer cards are designed to give you a short, concise answer to the question that you've asked. And this can be really helpful when you're preparing for trial. Now, the next thing that I want to point out is federal rule of evidence searching. Evidence is something that you're going to use the entire time. So to do that, you can either type in the rule, and this is going to take you right to that particular evidentiary rule. Then you can use your go-to box at the top, and you can look at notes to decisions, which is going to give you all of those different holdings and case summaries that relate to the different issues that come up under Rule 803. So you can browse through this table of contents and when you find one that's relevant, you can pop down to those notes to decisions and you can see what's what and get your answers quickly. Click the blue arrow to drop back up to the top. Now you can also shepherdize and should shepherdize your rules of evidence. Shepherdizing is gonna help us get additional guidance and it's also going to allow us to really zero in on a particular subsection. So you can see here that our Shepherd's Report is broken down based on the subpart of 803 that's being addressed. And you can see the number underneath the subsection is tell, it's what tells us how many sites there are to that particular subsection. So that's going to help us really focus on the part of the rule that is most relevant or most interesting to us. Now, the other thing that you can do if you don't have the particular rule, you can look up federal rules annotated. And when you click on that from the word wheel, you'll be taken to the table of contents for that source. One of the tips that I like to tell you guys is you click the star icon at the very top of the page and that adds it as a favorite source so that you can easily access it from the home page, which I'll show you again in a second. So for us, we can either run a search here for all of our federal rules or we could browse through any of our federal rule manuals from here. So we've got evidence, but of course we could look at any of the other ones as well, maybe even the rules of appellate procedure, depending on what we're working with. 
Now back on the home page, that star allows us to view any favorites that we've added. So we would see our favorite sources show up there and be able to search them quickly. The other thing that you may want to explore is the explore content pod, which is down here underneath the search box. Now, if we do explore content and we go to practice area, we can use evidence and we'll be able to see all of the sources that Lexis has available for evidence. So statutes and legislation or evidence codes and court rules, that's going to allow us to get to those federal rules of evidence as well. And then we could type in 803 here and it's going to help us find FRE 803. So there's three ways to find and use the federal rules of evidence. Now, remember that printing is free, so you can print to the printer, the Lexis printer, in the law library on the first floor. My only request is that when you print, you probably want to remove annotations because otherwise you're going to get thousands of pages. So let me show you really quick how to do that. So from the rule that you would like to print, you just click that printer icon up there at the top left. You want to select LexisNexis printer, and then you just make sure that you do the library computer lab, the one that's on the first floor. And then under your formatting options, this is where you can actually change the font. You can decide if you want that cover page or not. It's usually a good idea to keep it. And content specific options is where you can include or exclude annotations. So when you uncheck the box to include annotations, it means that it's just going to print the rule itself and not all of those pages and pages of annotations that come after it. If you have any questions about this or you want some guidance on printing maybe some of the annotations but not all, please just reach out to me or anyone on your Lexis team and we'll guide you through it. All right, the next thing that I wanna tell you about are our must-have evidence resources. So let's go back to that explore content pod. So if we're in practice area and we go back to evidence, and we look at the secondary materials that are commonly used in this practice area. There are two that I want to point out to you that are incredibly helpful. Weinstein's federal evidence actually breaks down everything by rule. And clicking on it is going to allow you to see the table of contents for that source. So we can see here that every rule is broken down and we can either navigate by browsing the table of contents or we can run a search within the source to find something that's going to be helpful to us. The second secondary material that's really useful is actually the Federal Litigation Guide, and I have links to both of these sources in your handout as well, particularly Chapter 37, which deals with objections. So if we scroll down here and I show you Chapter 37, you can see that that is all about objections. Objections tend to be a little bit tricky, but you also have all those other sections that you work on, opening statement, direct, exhibits, there's tons of guidance here on how to do it. Now, the other source that's really useful for trial prep is something called the Art of Advocacy. And the Art of Advocacy covers tons of different stages of trial. So I have it linked again in your handout. But anytime you know the title of a source, all you have to do is start to type in that title. And you're going to see a lot of that appear as recommended sources in the word wheel. So Art of Advocacy has a section on preparation of the case, direct examination, cross-examination, both of medical experts and non-medical experts, demonstrative evidence, jury selection, documentary evidence, which are your exhibits and foundations, your opening statement, and your summation or closing argument. And it's a great resource for do's and don'ts, some how-to's, practical checklists, all kinds of things that would be great as a go-to when you're preparing one of these sections of trial. I have other helpful trial resources listed on your handout, but those include the federal courtroom evidence, which you can click on and access here. We've also got evidentiary foundations, federal evidence tactics, which actually walks through the trial process with tactics for both the proponent and the opponent. So whether you're on the offensive or the defensive, that source is incredible for giving you some strategies on how to deal with the different stages of trial. Now, our last tip is folder sharing. So your folders are accessible from the link up here at the top. They will stay there throughout your entire research process. So you create a folder for your class or for your trial or 
whatever it is that you're working on. We'll just use this one as an example. And once you click on your folder, you have some different options. So you can create subfolders within it. You can send a link to this particular folder. You can add notes, you can call it something different, and you can share it. All you have to do is start to type in the name of the person you wanna share it with or an email address and click add to share and save. And they will be able to see the documents that you have in your folders and you have the ability to add notes and have them see those notes as well. So if you're working with partners or you have a trial team, that is a great option for making sure that everyone is literally on the same page. So I hope you found this useful. Again, if you have any questions, please just reach out to us at any time. We are here to help and we will see you soon. Bye.